Hey guys, welcome to another Faith Friday. I'm going to continue to do things a little different. Um, my face ain't all that great to look at anyway. So we're just going to focus on the Word of God and I'm going to give you guys a visual of these studies so that you can have something to look back on. So if you got a composition book, you got a marker, got a pen, let's get right into it. Um, first of all, let us pray. Lord God, I ask that you bless this fellowship, bless this study. Lord, give us ears to hear. Give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding so that we not only are able to comprehend the word for ourselves, but that we may also share it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so these are still Faith Fridays. So I'm still going to title it Faith Fridays. I'm still going to write my title up here. Faith Friday. And then, obviously, what this is, it is... Um, we're going to do the soap method because that's pretty much what I did even on the other pages before when I presented the information to you that I did scripture, observation, application, and prayer. All right, so let's begin. Um, what are we going to start with? Scripture. All right, so let's just write that here. Scripture. What scripture? Are, let me go ahead and write them out because I'm yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. Um, observation. And then um, application. And then prayer. All right, so the scripture we're looking at, I'm going to read from two different translations. The New Living Translation is, uh, well, it's the same scripture. Matthew 6 verse 22 new living translation states your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body when your eye is healthy your whole body is filled with light all right let's write that down shall we let's write with this big pen <laughs> i just like little weird stuff all right now, I'm going to read it from the translation I'm actually going to write it from, which is um, New King James. Again, it's Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. So let me write this down. The lamp of the body is the I if therefore your eye is good your whole body will be full of light. All right. So observation. Observation would be that in my Bible here, it groups the text, verses 20 through 22 and 23. So then let me get the full picture. What does 23 say? But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? All right. So there's a saying, the eyes are the window of the soul. There's another saying, um, you, there's always associated with the monkey, hear no evil, see no evil, you know, this, that, and third. Um, well, speak no evil is the other one, right? Hear no evil, speak no evil hear us see no evil but i wonder why i would say that okay so we know that usually sin starts in a multiple of places um mainly though we can all sum it up to our visual like what we see and what we perceive so like pornography right um i am lusting with my eyes if i were not to see what i saw then i wouldn't be lusting in the first place right um, and of course, all your senses can play a part, depending on who you are. 
but primarily and mainly a lot of us indulge in things that we aren't supposed to be looking at in the first place. Um, pornography is like the heavy hitter, but a lot that people don't want to admit to or even, you know, be mature about is social media as well, as well as reality TV show is probably one of the most toxic things going right now besides social media a lot of drama a lot of half-dressed people a lot of drinking and carrying on like a lot of things that are visually appealing to us that causes us to want to continue to watch and absorb and that's where the problem comes into because we're visually looking at these things excuse me and we're filling ourselves up and we're filling ourselves up with wickedness because these aren't things of light they don't glorify god and that's where you have to sum things up at. And here's another thing too, because you have people who say, well, I can look at things that maybe the average person cannot. A part of me disagrees with that. The same way that one thing wouldn't be less sinful because you do it versus me, right? Like that's pretty much how it, you're kind of presenting it. Like, well, I'm the one that's been saved for 20 years. So if porn went across my face, it's not going to affect me the same way of someone who was just, uh, say, two days ago. And that couldn't be far from the truth. Um, if you ever get a chance, opportunity to um, get my husband's book that he uh, co-written with, uh, wrote with his mother, um, Finding Peace in Her Pieces, um, she talked about how when she got saved that first week, they were in revival, that God took profanity from her lips. Um, and she was a hardcore, you wouldn't even imagine cursor, as she would say. Like every other word was a curse word. So we know one, that's the work of the Holy Spirit, right? And two, she had, literally she had just got saved and God took that away, right? Um, and there's people who still struggle with profanity to this day, and they have been saved for quite a bit of time. So you really can't go about looking at things in the respect of how long you've been saved. Now, obviously you can say this, the more, you know, the more you grow. I do believe in that. But again, there's always that one situational person that counters that whole perspective, like perspective, even if you think it's majority, nothing is absolute. So keep that in mind. But for the most part, why not watch what goes over and comes in front of you, like on your television or your social media and your phone? Like, why not be more careful? Um, it's all for the glory of God, right? So that would be my observation, which I should have been writing. <laughs> but um, my observation would simply be this. Um, whatever you fit your eyes on, can um, control you and manipulate and influence you. Be careful about what you absurd application um be more selective about what you watch on tv and more careful about who you follow on social media. And true story. Um, I, I'm not, like, like I said, I say things that I, 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 try to, I pretty much try to give examples of things I'm aware of and know about. I used to be a hardcore love and hip hop watching person before we decided to go cableless. Um, and like a typical young person, like I will follow these celebrities on Instagram and things of, the, uh, of that nature. Now, what happened was um, not too long ago, right? Um, I was following Erica Dixon. She is Lil Scrappy's baby mother. Um, 
the first one <laughs> anyway um because i don't think him and um bam is together anymore but anywho so you know to me she seemed and to give the illusion of a very just decent person she's not perfect right but she seems to be a little wholesome to me in the beginning um but with money um you'll see a lot of people compromise themselves and although she did post some personal things on her instagram a lot of her stuff was advertisement and not just any advertisement but she used to advertise or market a lot of sex toys and it caught me off guard one day and i'm like hold on who is this um and then i'm looking I'm like what this is erica dixon like wh what happened and but you know how that goes when you're endorsing something you're promoting marketing something they pay you to do so and it was on her page like heavenly like heavily like I, I remember seeing the first time i was like okay cool all right you know all right and then the second and third time I'm like whoa you know what mm -mm, mm -mm. so then process of elimination and she actually triggered a spiral effect i started to unfollow a lot of those reality celebrities and i replaced them with biblical um, pages things that are wholesome things that mean me some good and that's just an example and you know everybody got their own preference and things but i highly encourage you to think about how does the person you follow or the page edify you how does it glorify god if it doesn't then you need to reconsider um we have to be watchful and careful about ourselves um, because the devil is seeking whom he can devour and it's through those little insignificant things that you think don't matter that you can be influenced or deter away from God and his um, holy way. So please be careful. But anyway, prayer. Let's pray. Okay. Lord, help me to be careful about what I expose myself to. Let me just T-O. Oh, why do we do that? <laughs> oh, you guys can't see that. I'm sorry. And please excuse me. I got a different situation with a tripod. I'm going to try to figure this out. But um, for the most part, my son broke my other one, the one that was readily convenient and over my desk. So... I don't know. I'm trying to see if I can find one just like that or whatever, but it's been a little complicated over here. So please bear with me. Um, but uh, Lord, forgive me for not being more careful with my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. That's my prayer. I mean, um, now I already put soap there. All right, so scripture. I wrote it out, but I need to write it. Okay, let's do, where do I want to put that? I guess I can put it on the side, right? Well, no, I'm going to make it a little more neater. I just put it under here. It was Matthew... I prefer to put it on the top, but I like to skip a line too. So Matthew 6 and 22. And obviously for a complete meaning and context, you can read verses 22 and 23. And there you go, you guys. That's our little Faith Friday, our little soap method right there. I know my hair writing is this, but just use your imagination, okay? <laughs> um, Yeah. I love you guys. God bless. Take care. Bye.